Hello, my dear children. Children in the class of gravitation will continue with satellites which we started last time. Children, we have already had overview of satellites, and right now we are going to study in detail every aspect of the satellites. So let's begin the day with orbital speed. Well, satellites are those objects. You are aware of it. Satellites are those objects which revolve around a planet. This is planet of mass m, and this is satellite revolving or all around it in circular orbit. And the speed with which the satellites move in this orbit, the speed with which the satellite moves in this orbit, is called its orbital speed. So, what is orbital speed? We'll know very shortly. Well, children, we know that there cannot be circular motion without centripetal force. Here, the satellite is moving in circular orbit. So, where is this centripetal force coming from? This centripetal force, the centripetal required for circular motion of satellite, is provided by gravitational force of attraction between satellite and planet necessary centripetal force for circular motion is provided by gravitational force of attraction between satellite and planet what is centripetal force yeah centripetal force is mv square by r and force of attraction between planet and satellite is g mass of the planet into mass of the satellite upon r square that is square of distance between them we can see that the r cancels out one of the power of r cancels out and this mass cancels out what do we get we get v naught as v naught square as gm by r or v naught is gm by r square root so this orbital speed does not depend upon mass of the satellite and its value is what square root of gm by r well children we know that there are two types of satellites polar satellites and geostationary satellite polar satellites or earth satellites are those satellites which are very close to the earth surface so what is orbital speed for yeah earth satellite for these satellites this r is nearly equal to the radius of the planet why simply because h is much more smaller than r h is much more smaller than r therefore this r is nearly equal to the radius of the planet and if we write that we get what gm by capital r gm by capital r and what do we do we multiply within this square root we multiply by capital r and divide by capital r and what is this the first term is what gm by r square and the second term is what r and this gm by r square is acceleration due to gravity over the surface of the planet so if we write g for this and r as it is what do we get orbital velocity is square root of gr where g is acceleration due to gravity and r is the radius of the planet for our earth for our earth well g is 9.8 meter per second square and r is radius of our planet earth and this radius is 6400 Kilometer, or we can say 6400 kilometer, 64 into 24 5 meter. And if we substitute these values here, 9.8 into 64 10 4 5 square root, it comes out to be what? 7.9 kilometer per second. So this is orbital speed of Earth satellites, polar satellites. Well, geostationary satellite. Well, geostationary satellites are far away from Earth surface. they are called so because they are stationary with respect to earth and the distance at which these satellites revolve in their circular orbit around earth is exactly 36000 km so we'll write r as this distance of the satellite from the earth as capital r plus h well orbital velocity as usual is gm by r square root and for this r we write r plus h 
and what do we do within this square root we multiply it with the r square and divided by r square and what is this gm by r square gm by r square is as usual acceleration due to gravity over the surface of the planet so for this we write g this r square is written as it is and r plus h is written as it is we know each and every term here for planet earth yeah for our earth this g the average value of g over our surface is 9.8 meter per second square radius of earth is 6400 kilometer h is yeah 36000 kilometer if we substitute all these values we get the optical velocity as 3.1 kilometer per second earth well what is time period let us work out the expression for the time period well centripetal force as we know already centripetal force is provided by the force of attraction between satellite and the planet and we are going to write down centripetal force in term of angular velocity or angular frequency of the planet angular frequency of the satellite well what is centripetal force centripetal force has three relations one is mv square by r which we have used the other relation is what m r omega square and the third relation is what m into v into omega that is angular frequency so we are going to use the second relation for centripetal force m r omega square and that is equal to force of attraction between satellite and planet and what is that g m m by r square we can see that this mass m of the satellite cancels out so what do we get omega square as we get omega square as g m by r and this r square becomes what r cube or omega is equal to g m by r cube square root this is angular frequency of satellite and we know this angular frequency is 2 pi by t t is the time period of evolution and we write omega as 2 pi by t what do we get t as we get t as yeah 2 pi r cube upon gm this is the value of this is the expression for time period for any satellite as usual if the satellite happens to be polar satellite yeah earth satellite whose distance from the earth surface is negligible as compared to the radius of the earth surface or radius of the planet well what do we write this r as we write this r as capital r which is the radius of the planet we get t as 2 pi r cube upon gm well gm upon r square one r square can be taken from here to here in the denominator the so, gm upon r square becomes what g and we are left with r in the numerator so this time period can also be written as 2 pi r upon g whole square root what we have done here is we have used this relation this relation g is equal to gm by r square or gm is equal to g into r square just write gm is equal to g into r square we get this relation and if we substitute the value of r that is 64 into 20 power 5 and g as 9.8 and solve it we get the value of time period as nearly 84 84 minutes so this is time period of polar satellites well we can also write down this time period in term of material of density of the planet and this derivation is very very important children and this is asked in your school exam this is one of the favorite derivation of your school exam so what are we going to do now we are going to write down the time period of polar satellite we are going to write down the time period of polar satellite in term of the density of the material of the planet what is time period time period is 2 pi r cube upon gm this is the formula of time period and what are we going to do let us substitute the mass what is mass of the planet mass of the planet is going to be volume of the planet into density density of the material of the planet so mass of the planet is going to be volume of the planet planet is spherical in shape so its volume is going to be 4 pi by 3 r cube and we multiply this volume with density we get mass and if we substitute this mass here what do we get 2 pi r cube upon gm m m is what 
फोर पाई बाई थ्री आर क्यूब इन टू रो या वी कैन सी दैट दिस आर क्यूब कैंसल्स आउट दिस आर क्यूब कैंसल्स आउट एंड इफ यू टेक दिस टू पाई इन साइड दिस स्क्वायर रूट सो दिस टू पाई बिकन वॉट फोर पाई स्क्वायर जी फोर पाई बाई थ्री रो रिमेन्स एज इट इज एंड वी कैन सी हेयर दिस फोर कैंसल्स आउट विद दिस फोर एंड वन ऑफ द पाई कैंसल्स आउट दिस थ्री विद इन स्क्वायर रूट मूव अप टू द न्यूमरेटर सो वॉट डू वी गेट इन द न्यूमरेटर थ्री पाई अपॉन जीरो द टाइम पीरियड इज वॉट थ्री पाई अपॉन जीरो दिस इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर्मूला एंड वी कैन सी हेयर वी कैन सी हेयर दैट टाइम पीरियड ऑफ पोलर सेटेलाइट इज इनवर्सली प्रोपोर्शनल टू स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ द डेंसिटी ऑफ द मटेरियल ऑफ द प्लानट चलिए लेटेस्ट फाइंड आउट द टाइम पीरियड ऑफ जियो स्टेशनरी सेटेलाइट वी हैव फाउंड आउट द टाइम पीरियड ऑफ पोलर सेटेलाइट वी हैव फाउंड आउट इट्स वैल्यू एज योर नियरली एटी फोर मिनट्स एंड वी हैव ऑल्सो फाउंड आउट द टाइम पीरियड इन टर्म ऑफ डेंसिटी ऑफ द मटेरियल ऑफ द प्लानट सो वॉट इज टाइम पीरियड ऑफ जियो स्टेशनरी सेटेलाइट चलिए वी नो जियो स्टेशनरी सेटेलाइट्स आर एग्जैक्टली थर्टी सिक्स थाउजेंड किलोमीटर अवे फ्रॉम द सर्फेस सो यह वॉट इज द difference here this is the value of time period this is the value of time period which is written here this is 2 pi r cube upon gm for geostationary satellite for polar satellite this small r is equal to r the radius of the planet but for geostationary satellite this small r is going to be r plus h this h is 36000 km and if we substitute this as r plus h we get the r plus h cube now what are we doing here we are dividing it by r square and multiplying it with r square and this quantity we know we know that this quantity is nothing but acceleration due to gravity on the surface of the planet so for this we write g so what do we get r plus r cube as it is and for this we write g and r square is written as it is now we can substitute r is yeah r is what 64 into 10 to the power 5 h is what 36 into 10 to the power 6 meter 36000 km that is 36 into 10 to the power 6 meter g is 9.8 meter per second square for earth surface and r is equal to yeah we already know r is this so if we substitute all these values we get the time period exactly equal to 24 hours yeah 24 hours is the time period of revolution of geostationary satellites children i am going to work out a relation between orbital velocity which we have just studied right today and in the last class we studied escape velocity so we are going to work out a relation between orbital velocity and escape velocity well orbital velocity which we have just studied for polar satellite is what gr square root g is acceleration due to gravity and r is the radius of the planet and what is escape velocity escape velocity of an object over a planet is 2 gr where g is acceleration due to gravity over the surface of planet so this is escape velocity yeah this is escape velocity or speed which we have already studied this is orbital speed which we have studied right today now you can see here if we divide from ve v not this is relation 1 this is relation 2 from 2 we divide 1 what do we get we get what 2 gr square root divided by gr square root what does this mean yeah gr gr will cancel out we get ve upon v not as root 2 well this simply means k velocity is root 2 times orbital velocity this is what is the requisite relation this relation means that escape velocity is greater than orbital velocity by 41.4% and how do we work it out see i am going to work it out 
you can straight away say and also you can work it out what is scape velocity scape velocity is root 2 root 2 means what 1.414 times v naught we can write we can write 1.414 as what 1 plus 1 plus 0 0.414 times v naught let us open up the brackets what do we get we get v e is equal to v naught plus 0 0.414 times v naught that means v e minus v naught is equal to 0 0.414 0 0.414 times v naught we can write it as v e minus v naught upon v naught let us change the side of v naught from here what do we get 0 0.4 0.414 so what is this this is change of velocity this is delta v that is the velocity by which the value by which the escape velocity is greater than orbital velocity this is delta v and this is original value of velocity v naught so this is fractional value by which the escape velocity is greater than orbital velocity and that fractional value is what 0 0.414 and if you multiply both sides by 100 if you multiply both sides by 100, what do we get? Percentage value. This is percentage value. Percentage value. And this percentage value is what? 41.4. What does this mean? This simply means V E. V is V is greater than greater than V naught. The risk velocity is greater than orbital velocity by by 41.4 percent children let us know finally what is the energy of satellite you already know that satellite is an object which moves in the gravitational field of the planet the motion of satellite takes place in conservative force field so what is energy of satellite energy of satellite is always sum total of the kinetic energy k of the satellite and potential energy u the total energy e is sum total of kinetic energy k and potential energy u what is kinetic energy kinetic energy is 1 upon 2 m v naught square where v naught is what orbital speed if we substitute the value of v naught gm by r square root which we have found out a short while ago if we substitute this value here what do we get kinetic energy as 1 upon 2 g m the mass of planet into m the mass of satellite upon r the distance between them so this is expression for kinetic energy of satellite this is expression for kinetic energy of satellite well what is potential energy potential energy is nothing but potential energy of two charge configuration one is two mass configuration one is what uh, the satellite and the other mass is the planet so potential energy of two mass configuration is what minus g m1 m2 by r r is the separation between the two masses so what is potential energy of satellite potential energy of satellite is going to be yeah minus g m1 m1 is the mass of the planet m2 is the mass of satellite and r of course is the distance between them so this is kinetic energy this is potential energy and their sum total is going to be total energy well if you look at this kinetic energy well this kinetic energy if we write as say plus x we write this kinetic energy as say plus x what we are going to do in fact we are going to compare kinetic energy potential energy and total energy all from each other if this kinetic energy happens to be plus x then this potential energy is going to be minus 2x why minus 2x look at this kinetic energy g mm by 2r this is what g mm by r so this value is twice of this value you multiply kinetic energy by 2 and you will get this value so if this is x this value is going to be what 2x but remember kinetic energy is always positive it is plus x and this is always negative 
and that is minus 2x so if we compare the two values so what do we get out of that comparison if this is x this is going to be minus 2x and what is their sum total their sum total is going to be total energy of the satellite and what is that e is equal to k plus u and if you add x with minus 2x what are we going to get x plus minus 2x is going to yield minus x and that is what we get k plus u is what sum total of these two total energy total energy comes out to be what yeah minus g mm by 2r and if this is x this is minus 2x then of course it is going to be what minus x now if we know this uh, the comparison of the values in our mind we can work out the ratio of kinetic energy to potential energy potential energy to total energy or kinetic energy to total energy what is the ratio of kinetic energy to potential energy it is what minus 1 is to 2 what is the ratio of kinetic energy to total energy minus 1 is to 1 what is the ratio of potential energy to total energy yeah it is 2 is to 1 mass mass will cancel out 2 upon 1 so you can find out the ratio of any of these three values from each other well this energy is negative total energy of satellite is negative why it is simply because satellite is bound to the planet it cannot leave the planet on its own satellite is moving in the gravitational field of the planet it is attracted by the planet and that force of attraction provides necessary centripetal force for circular motion so satellite is always bound with the earth it cannot leave the earth or planet itself there is an invisible cord between satellite and the planet and that invisible cord is is that of force of attraction so this negative energy signifies that signifies a closed system it tells us that satellite is bound with the planet it cannot leave the planet itself and if we want to remove the satellite from the planet then we need to supply this much of positive energy so what is the binding energy binding energy is the same value of energy but positive so this is binding energy the same value of energy but positive is binding energy of the planet so this is the energy with which the planet is bound to sorry satellite is bound to the planet and if we want this satellite to move out of the gravitational field of the planet then we need to give this much value of positive energy to the satellite to escape to move out of the planet's uh, gravitational field well if we plot these expressions graphically this is energy axis this is in a negative energy axis this is zero zero this is r the separation between satellite and the planet the graphical plot of this is the graphical plot of kinetic energy this is k versus r this is k versus r graph k versus r this is k versus r graph the kinetic energy is always positive and it varies inversely with distance potential energy potential energy this is the graph of yeah this is the graph of u versus r and this is the graphical plot of total energy e against r and this ratio which we see here should be obvious from the graph like here like here see what is kinetic energy yeah it is plus x what is potential energy yeah this is potential energy what what it has to be minus 2x from this graph it has to be minus 2x and what is total energy and total energy is what minus x everywhere this ratio should be visible everywhere over the graph if this happens to be what alpha well this total energy that is potential energy has to be what minus 2 alpha and this is going to be what yeah minus alpha so everywhere at each and every distance this ratio that k u and e 1 is to minus 2 is to minus 1 that ratio should be obvious from the graph so children with this we come to the end of today's class thank you very much 
and god bless you all